Good morning, good children of God. Good morning. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. And the ransom to the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The, the prophet Isaiah tells us about the joy of asserting the God's house. The prophet tells us to imagine being set free, being a burden, being released to live the fully let, live in the grace to and wonder of life itself, surrounded by those who love us like no, no one else. And then he tells us that the journey to gather there, to get there is just as much a joy. The psalmist says, happy are these whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, who made heaven and earth, who keeps faith, who executes justice, gives food, sets prisoners free, open, opens eyes, lifts up, watches over, upholds. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. We light these candles, the candles of joyous hope, of proclaim peace and the, the depth, deep and everlasting joy as a sign that we are those who walk with a skip in our step become we because we can we can see the the destination and the is its pure joy and we are ascending to God's promise would you please Jan and join me in our call to worship <coughs> With steadfast love and growing faith, we come as the people of Christ. With prayers of hope and songs of joy, we come to worship God, the eternal, the ever loving. With thankful hearts and humble prayers, we come to give God glory and praise. Here we are together as people of faith and hope to celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ. If you would turn to your bulletin insert for the Advent uh, liturgy today, and for those of you who have been around for a bit, you will recognize that this comes from the 1969 Red Hymnal, because um, you're going to hear all the thou, that, th, the, th, the, th, the, the, the.
be joyful, O earth, for the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just in having salvation. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began. To perform the mercy promised unto the fathers and to remember his holy covenant. I serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Please be seated. shall be with men. Yea, he will be their God, and they shall be his people. Has been, uh, the habitation of thy throne, O God. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. A bruised reed he will not break, and the smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth judgment unto truth. Say unto those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong and fear not. Behold, your God will come and save you. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. The voice of the herald cries, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Rejoice in God your Savior, for he who is mighty has done great things, and holy is his name. 
through the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Please stand. That's one more verse of the last song. What we just did, yeah, that's one more. and graciously regard us them of low estate. Praise the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. To him be glory and power from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Good morning. Our first reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 42. Here is my servant whom I am uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A, breezed, a bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench, but he will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you to righteousness. I have taken you up by the hand and kept you. I have given you a covenant as a people, as I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring the prisoners out of the dungeon, or from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and the new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 11, beginning at verse 2. When John heard in prison that the Messiah, what the Messiah was doing, he sent the word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk. Those with a skin disease are cleansed. The deaf hear, the dead raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. 
What did you go out into the, into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in so soft robes? No, those who wear so soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending, you, sending my messenger ahead to you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has risen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least of the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. Under our prayer concerns this morning, um, I would ask that you keep uh, Sister Jane Harburg. I know she's with us today someplace. Where is she? Oh, she's hiding back there. Jane had a pacemaker installed last Friday. So, uh, and you're just feeling energetic now and bouncy? <laughs> 
soon, soon, Jane. Um, so please keep uh, Jane in your prayers as she continues her um, recovery from that. Um, also, Dewey, when, how did you do this week? This Wednesday. Okay. So do you want the discipleship class to come to the hospital and visit you then, or what? Oh, okay. We'll see what we can do. <clears throat> so please keep doing your prayers as he looks forward to that. Um, also, uh, Mike Miller will be having um, a valve repair or replacement in early January. Um, so please keep uh, Mike in your prayer as they actually are up, uh, I believe, up north this weekend having some quality time. So um, Mike doesn't feel... Uh, doesn't feel tired, doesn't feel down, but he obviously has a problem with one of his valves. So uh, please keep them in your prayers as they go through that. <clears throat> also, please, Car Carol Balaam, who uh, I, I mentioned that she had a hip replacement. She actually had a hip repair. Um, it, she'd had a repair to Watertown, and it didn't wasn't healing properly. So UW had to redo some of that. And uh, so hopefully she is uh, healing well now. She will be doing rehab I believe almost every day so uh, to get back in shape so please uh, keep her in your prayers as well um, a family over in Watertown I'm sure by now most of you have heard um, there was a fire early Friday morning over in Watertown and um, three people lost their lives um, all of them under the age of 18 um, we were there for an hour before we found out that there were still people in the house. Watertown did make an attempt to um, enter the house to do a search and rescue, um, actually lost one of their own guys and had to call a call of Mayday. Um, and they ended up having to back out. So um, please keep the Watertown crew in your prayers. That's always tough when you, um, and we're always told that, you know, that you're not, it's not your fault but yet, that's what we're paid to do um, and trained to do. So it's, uh, it's kind of tough. But um, there was, I believe, one child that managed to get out of the house. So there's been conflicting re reports about that, and I'm hoping that shortly they will uh, uh, announce all of that. But please keep that family in your prayers. The fire was actually caught by one of the city personnel. They, were, they saw it on a camera from the water plant. Um, they saw the flames because they were like a block from the river and on that between them and the river is like an industrial place so they were kind of like the last house on this block there was nothing else around them um, that would have caught this so but a tragedy for um, a community of any size much less one of Watertown size and I believe the family if I remember if I someone told me last night had been here a couple years ago had been in Lake Mills so um, I don't have anything more than that, but please keep them in your prayers. <clears throat> Are there any other prayer concerns? Todd. Are there any other concerns or joys this morning? Would you please join me then in a word of prayer? Lord, Advent is to be a season of joyous expectation, waiting for our Savior to come once again into our world and lives. But Lord, the rest of the world does move on there are still health issues. There are still deaths. Life does not end simply because the season of Advent has started. We know, Lord, that because of your coming into our world, we are saved from this life and able to move with you into the next. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings you give us of doctors, 
of nurses, of first responders to do their best to help us in our time of need. And we thank you for the skill that you give to them to do so. Continue, Lord, to bless them. Bless all of us as we continue this journey of ours, as we welcome you once again into our world. Bless us with your presence and guide us with your Holy Spirit. For all we do, we do in your name. Amen. Uh, the prophet Isaiah is kind of an interesting animal, um, or the book of Isaiah. It's deceiving because Isaiah actually um, is three different people. It, it's all one book. It all shows uh, as, one, as one book in our scripture. But the early part of Isaiah that we read from last week is the people uh, still in Jerusalem. And they haven't been, haven't been carried away yet, and Isaiah is prophesying about what is to come there. This part of Isaiah is, is they're in exile and talking about returning to the promised land. And then the last part of Isaiah talks about being back there or heading back there. If you can imagine this long trek that the people had to take um, to go back to their holy land. Now, part of the problem with some of the folks there is that the, all the intelligent folk, like you, would be taken away, all right? Um, when, and when somebody would uh, conquer a land, they would take all the people who might cause trouble and move them off someplace. So the people are left behind. Well, the people who are left behind think they are true, the true God's children. Well, when the folks come back from exile, and we're not talking about um, like, you know, a few years. We're talking about a generation of people. Some people who have never, ever seen the Holy Land or where they had actually, their parents had been born. So they're coming back to a land and they think they are the true people of God because they got taken away. So if you think that class warfare was an issue, is an issue today, it's been around forever. People have had problems, you know, looking down their nose at people and saying, well, you didn't do this. It's like people from Sturgeon Bay. <laughs> people from Sturgeon Bay have a tendency to look down their nose at, at other people as not being as good a Christian as some others. And I should apologize to Brother Nelson for abusing him uh, today um, in front of his family. But that was the first one I came up with, Bruce. And, and of course, uh, I say that knowing full well my wife is from Sturgeon Bay. And you know how she looks down on all of you. But Isaiah says these words. My apologies. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I put my spirit upon him. He'll bring forth justice in the nation. Now, we have a tendency. This is one of Isaiah's servant songs. There's a four servant songs in Isaiah. This is kind of one of them. Um, and although we equate this with Jesus Christ as the coming of Christ, we should not forget the fact of the context of which it was said. The words that Isaiah is using here, some of these words are only found in Isaiah. And, the, and there's a the thought that perhaps some of this, as it gets down a little farther, is actually not talking about the, the Messiah who is to come, but is talking about the people themselves. God's people. You know, these are, after all, God's children, right? The chosen ones. He says, thus says the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it. I have called you in righteousness. This is the only place in Scripture that is found. I have called you in righteousness, not to be righteous, but I've called you out of my own righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but the Jewish folks felt that they needed to stay within their own 
uh, group. They didn't like to really go outside too often. But how can they be a covenant to the people if they only stay within? It doesn't work so well, does it? A light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, and from prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other. Well, that worked well, didn't it? <laughs> to those who sit in darkness. Have you guys heard that before, that phrase? Well, give light to those who sit in darkness. Have any of you ever heard that before? What is the normal con you have? Thank you, James. What is the normal context we oftentimes use that in? Christmas. Oh, yeah, that's coming up, isn't it? Is Christmas coming up, James? Is Christmas coming up? Yeah? How many days away? 14. You got any presents under your tree yet? No, you seem very bitter about that, James. Yeah. <laughs> you think that's a... Should I talk to your parents about that? Maybe. Maybe, okay. So, how many of you growing up, or perhaps even yourself, you're sitting at home, say, and somebody comes in and leaves the door hanging open. What's the words you normally hear? What's that? Born in a barn. Bo yeah, born in a barn, close the door. No, I say that to my kids and I, and I tell them right away, and I know you weren't because I was there. Right? Yep. Close the door, you're born in a barn. I mean, because let's face it, if your room is nice and heated and you open that door up, what happens? It cools down. In the summertime, it heats up, right? You can't, you can't share the heat, unfortunately. You can't share that. Um, James Blair? No, I didn't. Now, what do I have here? Hershey Kisses. Hershey Kisses. How many are in there? A bunch. A bunch. That's right. Now, should I eat these all myself? No, why not? Okay. Why not? You have a bigger belly. I, I have a bigger belly? I want to look like Santa Claus. Well, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pass these out to the people. I want everybody to get a Hershey kiss. Could I uh, get a couple other helpers up here? Other Ava, you, Ava, you can come up. Ella, come on up. Here you go. Ooh. I want to eat these. You can't eat all those. Aww. You'll get some. Oops, there you go. Pass these out, please. Make sure everybody gets one. And don't forget Cora over there, because... Now, please keep in mind, I do not want to have to deal with the janitors tomorrow because they're finding the little foil things all over the floor. Cora, did you get one? Cora got one. What about my two yahoos up in the balcony? Oh, they're going up to him. Oh, oh. Oh, you got some left over? They're yours. Oh, am I getting a skunk guy from your mother? Nice catch. Blair, you can keep what you got left over. <laughs> no! Boys and girls, I shared that with you. You can keep them. Give some to Grandma so she stays awake. Um, now, I had a bag of these and I shared them. My bag is no longer full, right? 
if we share things about of ourselves with people, oftentimes we're, we're diminished, right? If I help, if I would give somebody some water from my water jug, or if I give someone a piece of, of uh, steak, who does that? Um, you, you don't have as much, right? You open the door up, the heat goes out. Light is the one thing you can share without it being diminished. If the door over here was closed, were closed, lights were off in here, but the light was on the hallway, I open the door up, the light's going to come streaming in. But is the light going to be diminished in the hallway? No. Being a light to the nations means bringing the light of God to those people who sit in darkness. It does not mean we have to, or that we ourselves will not be as strong as we were before. We're going to be just as good as we were before, even though we're sharing the light. The other thing, other, other thing about light, light does not exist for itself. Now the chocolate you're eating once it's gone, it's gone. Unless you can beg some of the kids who have passed it out to give you some more of theirs. And good luck with that. As my father used to say, you're going to pull back a bloody stub. But light, you turn a light on, everybody gets to share in it. Right? It's not something you can keep for yourself. And light itself helps us to see other things. It does not exist for its own purpose. It exists to help God's people. The light of Christmas, the light that we are, the light to the world, does not exist just for us. It exists for us to give that to the world. No, that doesn't mean that sometimes you might not get tired from giving the light, right? It, it, I mean, I know, turning light switches on and off, it's very tiring. I usually have to take a nap after I've turned the light on and off a couple times. That's funny, you can laugh at that. But we are called the children of light. We are called, and at Christmas time, we especially talk about light, do we not? What is the most beautiful part of the Christmas Eve service? Is it the preaching of the pastor? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you're preaching. <laughs> what is the most beautiful part of that service? The candles, right? And, and you, unfortunately, for 30, barring last year, for 30 years, I have had the, the great joy of standing up front and watching that light spread out to the people. From a dark place in the sanctuary to all of a sudden, this little glow of light that goes on. And granted, that's not a tremendous amount of light, that it puts out, unless of course you, you know, stare at it like that, do not do that on Christmas Eve. But that is what makes it beautiful. That light. We are the children of light. We need to share that good news with all the people, the people who sit in darkness. That's not just people who are sitting in the dark in a darkened room, it's people who obviously can't see for one reason or another. Not necessarily physically, but spiritually. Cannot see the light that we have. Isaiah calls us, challenges us to take the light that you all know in Jesus Christ. That you all know comes from our God. That you all know is a gift to us and gift that to the rest of the world. That, my friends, 
is what we do so that others may come to see our Lord and Savior through us. Would you please join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you this day for the light that we get to share in not only on Christmas Eve, but every day of the year. Oftentimes we do take light for granted. Your sun comes up and it brightens our world at times, sometimes more than others, and then it goes down at night. We turn on a light switch at home and think nothing of it unless there is no power there. We ask, Lord, that you help us to see that we are children of the light, that we are called, we are empowered to go out into this world to share that light with the nations. And, and, and in saying nations, we don't mean going overseas, but sharing it with those most dear to us. Lord, bless us as we continue in this journey with you over the next couple of weeks, as we await our Lord and Savior's coming into our world again, the light of the world that we carry. Amen. Next Sunday, our uh, Sunday school will be presenting its program. So uh, please join us next Sunday for that. Um, as they're doing a lot of singing next week. Singing. Costumes. Donuts. Ooh. So please come and join us next Sunday morning for that. Um, also, um, this afternoon or this morning after worship today, the deaners will be downstairs wrapping candles. They have a couple hundred candles to get ready for Christmas Eve, our Christmas Eve services. So if you'd like to, you may uh, join them this morning. How many you need, Kenny? 50, 60 people? Many as you can get. All right. Um, please note that on Christmas Eve, we will be having three services as uh, we have our 3.30, 5.30, and 7.30 services. We will be uh, both live streaming and recording our 5.30 service. So um, if the weather should turn south and you cannot make it here, uh, you can tune in on, on your uh, computer or television, however it works, and um, you get to see what's and hear what's happening um, at the service. Christmas Day is also a Sunday, so we will be having services on Christmas Day at our normal time of 10 o'clock. And you may come as you are to that service. Um, so I, there will be coffee available in the gathering room, um, so you can uh, hopefully have a chance to stay awake. Um, but the service won't be, it'll be a, a joyous service, a lot of caroling, a lot of, uh, uh, of good things, and probably not the pastor preaching a whole lot. Yeah. We are looking for some volunteers for singing Morning Star for all the services. We do need um, for all of them. So if you'd like to, you may uh, call the, the office and, uh, and let us know that, and we'll make sure we get you um, as part of the group. Is there an age limit for that? No. All righty. So Donna. No? Oh, okay. Donna walked in this morning and we were talking about singing Morning Star, Donna Hinsman, and I said, oh, let's get Donna to sing Morning Star. And she just kept walking. Um, how? You can sing it with a friend. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, Donna, my apologies, it's been a long weekend. <laughs> um, haven't got a lot of sleep this weekend. Um, thank God the Packers aren't in this afternoon, so I don't have to ask forgiveness sleeping through most of that game. Uh, but Donna Crossman, yeah, um, I, I suppose, 
I said Donna Hensman, yes. Because uh, I'm sure that Paul was up in the balcony going, did something happen that I didn't know about? <sighs> um, there's also uh, green slips up here if you'd like to get a luminary for Christmas Eve that helps our um, CEC. And I believe um, that goes to our assistance fund. So uh, Christmas ham checks need to be in uh, today or tomorrow so that they can get those ordered as well for the uh, food pantry. If you'd like to put something in the big uh, tub that the fire department has placed here for the food pantry, please do so uh, next week as that will be picked up on the 20th um, to go to the food pantry. And last year, I believe we filled two pickup trucks full two or three pickup trucks full of the barrels. Um, so, um, and they were so heavy that I couldn't lift them. Now, I know of course you all say, but Dave, you're so big and strong. Um, I have pastor's arms, so, um, but you're welcome, please, to do that. Are there any other announcements this morning? Kenny. I also wanted to share with you, um, some of you might remember some Yahoo named uh, Groff, Paul Groff. Some of you remember him? Yeah, we, you know, he wasn't that good of a pastor, so we retired him. Um, bishop Groff, excuse me. Um, the bishop sent a letter out to the, to the pastors this week, and the bishops in our denomination are pastors to the pastors. Um, if I have feeling down or something, I can call one of our bishops and speak with them, because it's a whole lot better than talking to Bruce. Um, boy, just smacking you, Bruce, sorry. Uh, you know, if I didn't love Bruce so much, I wouldn't even talk to him, so. Um, but anyways, uh, most of the letter uh, that, that they sent out, all the bishops put a little paragraph in, uh, really speak to each of the pastors, except for Paul's, the piece that Paul wrote. And so yesterday afternoon I called him um, and, and, and asked him if I could read that before the congregation. His response to me was, I forgot what I wrote. Um, but please... Uh, uh, bear with me as I, as I read this. Growing up in a Christian family, voices spoke the key words of Advent, preparation, expectation, anticipation. Now I hear voices of people expressing laments, longings, yearnings, all reflecting the struggles of our time. Where is the voice that cries in the wilderness? Where is that voice that breaks through and rises above all other voices that speaks of hope and possibility and yes, even of transformation? With a soft voice, with a soft cry voiced by a baby long ago, evolve into a voice calling for people to follow him in loving one another, forgiving each other, healing and being healed. From the voice that announced to Mary, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. To the voice that spoke on the Mount of Transfiguration, this is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. It is imperative that we hear and respond to that one voice above all others. When the Christ speaks to each of us directly, come, follow me. Peace be with us all, Paul. Would you please stand, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Friday night's practice for the Sunday school will be at 5.30, not 5 o'clock, 5.30 to, to 7. Um, they'll be practicing the Sunday school pageant and having a pizza party. Um, and the optimists are going to be setting up for their gift wrap in, in the back as well, so we may have to do some. My office? Oh, I'll need to clean a couple things. So would you please stand and join me in our closing hymn?
conviction. May we now go out into the world. May God's spirit keep us focused on the light that shines brightly with hope and abundance. May we be nourished in God's light. To all we meet. Amen. Go now to love and to serve our Lord. Amen.